was a Revelation 12 and verse 11. Overcoming. Overcoming the uh, dragon, that old serpent called the devil, that stick should be cast down here to this earth. And that's worse than releasing all these prisoners. That's worse than all these people coming across the border. It's when, you know, hell, the gates of hell is open up. And all these evil spirits come out of hell. That's what God said was going to happen in these last days. That's why I'm taking my time trying to give you the um, word that's going to stand up against these powers and forces that's being released upon the earth. And what was it, Revelation 12 and verse 11? Is that correct? Yes, sir. Let's read that one again. This, uh, the testimony of Jesus, point five, I guess. And uh, Isaiah gave us a good insight by telling us a virgin shall be born. And by telling us under us a son is given. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. And the gospel, it teaches us, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It's the power that, that brings salvation, deliverance, healing. Drives sicknesses and diseases, drives death back, drives back all kinds of oppressions. Satan is out there like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And you resist him with the gospel. The gospel is the word of our testimony. Our testimony. Is how Jesus was born and how he was raised up among us and went about doing good, healing all that was sick and all that was oppressed of the devil. And let's read on first John chapter one and start at verse one through verse ten. First John. Chapter 1. That which is from the beginning. Listen. You know, this morning I was telling you, in the beginning was what? Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word is what was from the beginning. Our beginning started in Adam and Eve. But before Adam and Eve and before... There was any anything created before there was any galaxies, planets, before there was any angels. Anything in the beginning, the word existed. Yes. And the word is what made all things. That's right. yes. He spoke everything into existence. We didn't come from monkey. Amen. We didn't come from some kind of Reptile, re, re, reptile, or what you call those things? Wow. Reptile. You know, that float it up out of the, come up out of the water or something. Y'all know how the biology, uh, Darwin's theory of evolution taught this in school. That man come from, um, the Big Bang. Where did the Big Bang come from? <laughs> But all things were spoken into existence by God's word. God said, let there be light and there came the sun. God spoke these 
oceans. God spoke this dry land into existence. Every man that's creeping and crawling, God spoke it into existence. There's nothing made that his word didn't create. His word spoke it, and when the word spoke it, it came into being. And that's how Jesus come about. A virgin gave birth. Woman that wasn't touched by any man gave birth to the Son of God. And right here, First John, read that. First John one and one. Read that. That which was from the beginning. That which was from the beginning. Which we have heard. Which we have heard. Which we have seen with our eyes. Which we have seen with our eyes. This is one of the apostles talking about how that he was right there with Jesus. When Jesus was walking this earth in the flesh like a man. Which we have seen with our eyes. Which we have looked upon. Which we have looked upon. And our hands have handled. And I look, we looked upon it. Our hands have handled. Thomas said, you know, they come to Thomas and said, Jesus is risen. And Thomas said, I'm not going to believe it unless I can see with my eyes and my hands can touch where the nails went into his hands and into his feet until I can reach my hand into his side and see where they pierced, where they pierced them in the side. I ain't going to believe it until I can see it. And this is what they are referring to. Finish reading that. Our hands have handled. Our hands have handled. Of the word of life. Of the word of life. For the life was manifested. The life was manifested. And we have seen it. We have seen it. And bear witness. And bear witness. And show it to you. Show to you. That eternal life. That eternal life. Which was with the Father. Which was with the Father. And was manifested unto us. And was manifested to us. That which we have seen, which we have seen and heard, and heard, declare we unto you, declare to you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, that you may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father uh -huh. and with His Son Jesus Christ. Yes. And these things write we unto you, uh -huh. that your joy may be full. Yes. This then is the message which we have heard of Him, and declare unto you. That God is light. God is light. And in him, in him is no darkness at all. There's no perversion. In him, there's no twisting in him. You're not going to see God going around heaven with, well, anyway, I ain't going to say it. But I'm just saying the way these people are trying to turn our young people into something that they're not. It hurts me. Hurts my heart. Trying to take a little kitty going and tell that little kitty going that you uh, don't know if you're a boy or you don't know if you're a girl. So I want you to dress like a boy today. And tomorrow I want you to dress like a girl until you grow up and realize you can make up your own. Uh, it's the devil. Confuses our mind. Confuses people. Got them thinking that it's something that they're not. God made them. He made them uh, male and female and transgender and bisexual and gay and lesbian and homosexual. Oh, he did? Ain't that what the Bible said? When God made them, he made them what? Male and female. Well, somebody needs to tell people. God didn't make all this confusion. God is not the author of all this confusion. God ain't the author of a man going around here. Well, switch it. <laughs> is it? 
Finish me, man. I, I'm just. Y'all can tell I'm, I'm just disturbed the way they're trying to mess up this generation. I'm disturbed. And people want, want you to accept it. This is the very sin that brought fine brimstone from heaven upon Solomon and Gomorrah. This is the very sin that God called it an abomination. Abomination is the, one of the worst sins you can commit. And for leaders to and endorse it and to back it and get behind it and for us to put our vote behind it, we become a partaker of that. Take a stand for righteousness. Take a stand for truth. Our young people, their destiny is not to become sodomites. Their destiny is for God to walk in them, talk in them, manifest itself in and through them. I'm trying to get away from this. And I'm trying my best to just stay with that which was in the beginning, the Word. But read. Did you finish reading it through, through verse 10? And if we say, if we say, if we have fellowship with Him, if we have fellowship with Him, and walk in darkness, and walk in darkness, we lie. We tell it a lie. And do not the truth. And do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, but if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, and the blood of Jesus, Christ His Son, Christ His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Not only forgives us, but Drives it out of our heart. Drives sin out of our mouth. Drives it out of our conscience. Drives sin out of our eyes. Drives it out of our ears. Drives it from our body. The blood don't just forgive, but it cleanses. It drives it out. It drives the stain of it out. It drives the guilt of it out. It drives the evil. Go ahead. If we say we have no sin, we say we have no sin. We deceive ourselves, uh -huh. and the truth is not in us. Yes. If we confess our sin, we confess our sin. He is faithful. He's faithful and just. And just to forgive us to, our sins. If we confess our sins, yes. hard to get people to confess and admit that we have uh, got off the foundation. That we have gotten off even for this nation to admit. That it's gotten off the foundation of the forefathers. It's hard for people to humble themselves when they are wrong to admit it. Go ahead. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned. If we say we ain't sinned. We make him a liar. We make him a liar. And his word is not in And his word is, you know one thing about the word of God. Bible says, whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin. Y'all read that? Yeah. First John chapter 3. Read that. Whoever is born of God, read that. First John 3 and 8, I think. Somewhere in that area. He that committed sin. Yeah, read that. He that commits sin. He that committed sin. He that commits sin. Is of the devil. Is of God. The devil. Now, he that commits sin, commitment practice. We stumble into it. We make accidents. We make mistakes. But we don't go around here and practice sin. That's right. That's right. Because if we practice it, then we're of the devil. Uh-huh. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Yes. For this purpose. For this purpose. The Son of God. The Son of God. Manifested. Was manifested. That he might destroy. That he might destroy. The works of the devil. He was manifested to destroy Jesus was the Son of God came into the world to destroy sin and the curse that comes through sin and the sickness and the diseases and the misery that sin brings. Now he's going back to heaven. He sent his spirit and his spirit is raising us up and we are the sons of God. And through us, sickness and sin and disease and evil and perversion 
is to be destroyed through us. We are the sons of God. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. He saved us so we can be a light, so we can be salt, so we can be an example. So through us, he can destroy the same diabolical evil powers. Go ahead. Whosoever, Whosoever is born of God, is born of God does not commit sin. Now you hear that? Whoever is born of God don't commit sin. Uh huh. For his seed, for his seed, remaineth in him. What? His seed remaineth. What is the seed? The word. Yes. You born of God, you won't go out there and on purpose practice it. You will go out there on purpose and commit sin. Because that sin won't let you. David said, Thy words have I hid in my heart that I what? Might not sin against you. Born of the one, I'm not talking about born of religion. I'm not talking about born of tradition. I'm talking about being born of the pure, of the graduated word. That which was from the beginning. Yes. That which created all things. Yes. That which brought everything into existence. Yes. We're born of that word. That yes. word has produced the nature of Christ. It would bring forth the holiness of Christ. It would bring forth the righteousness of Christ. Yes. Yes. We plant beans. What's going to come up? We plant oak, and what's going to come up? We plant corn, what's going to come up? We plant religions, what's going to come up? We plant traditions, what's going to come up? But if we plant the word, what's going to come up? The word, the word is Jesus, and Jesus is the righteousness of God. Through him, we have life. Through him, we have holiness. Through him, we have power against the devil and against all his works. Born of the word. Yes. That's right. We need the word in us. He sent his word. First, uh, Psalm 107 in verse 20. He sent his word to what? Heal and to deliver. John chapter, I believe, 15. He said, you're clean through the word that I've spoken. We're not clean through sermons. We're clean through the word. We're not delivered by our own uh, ideologies and by our own theology and by our own son. We're delivered through the word. Paul, he said, Paul, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Preach the the word. Yes. We've been born of the word and the word will produce the life of Christ. It will produce a religion. It will not produce hypocrisy. It will produce righteousness. It will produce holiness. It will produce the very nature of God flowing out of us. Huh? The word have I hid in my heart. That's what David said. That I might not sin against you. Born of the word. Whosoever born of the word do not practice. Don't commit sin. That's what Joseph, when he was captured, taken out of his homeland, taken over into a strange land, handcuffed, bound, and he and his other friends, Shake like Meshach and Abednego, they was they they had been taught the word. When they went to a country where nothing but idolatry and these Joseph, Daniel, excuse me, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel said that I'm not going to eat anything that has been offered to idols. I'm not going to defile myself with the king's meat. And Daniel stood up because when he was brought out of 
Israel into this pagan country. He he was brought out of handcuffs, but the word was hidden in him. The right. word in him kept him from bowing down to idolatry. Yes. He said, I'm not going to defile myself with all of this mess that's been offered to idolatry. Yes. The word inside of Daniel is what kept him sanctified, kept him in obedience, kept him in the will of God. It was the word that kept Joseph. When Joseph was brought as a prisoner. Y'all men? Nothing but a prisoner. And they took him. And when they took him, he found favor with God in the prison. Until Pharaoh took him into his own house, made him head over everything he had, but yet Pharaoh had a wife that was a Jezebel. <laughs> and she looked at Joseph, Pharaoh wasn't there. She went and disrobed herself and said, Joseph, come go to bed with me. And everybody here, but me and you. You know, I don't care if ain't nobody watches you. The word, if you got the word, the word will still keep you. Yes. Keep you in the fear of God. Yes. Joseph said, uh uh. Said, the master have given me over, given me charge over everything except you. And you're his. And she grabbed him by his robe. And Joe fled. The Bible says flee from the patient. Some people run to stuff like that. They run to pornography. They run to nudity. They run to uncleanness. But God said flee from it. Joseph fled from all of that. Why? The word was in it. The word said run man run. The word said get away from it. Give no place to it. Close your mind to it. Close your eyes to it. Don't let it get in your heart. Don't give yourself to that. The word took him when he was in another country. That's what kept Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They was in another country. The word kept him. That's what kept Moses. Moses, when he could have been called the next Pharaoh. The Bible said Moses chose to suffer afflictions with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Why? Because his mother, when he was a boy, told him, Moses, you are a deliverer. God's going to raise you up. Don't you bow down to all this stuff in Egypt. Don't bow down to all of this evil. Moses hid that in his heart. That's why Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin only for a season. The pleasure of sin only lies just for a season. Have pleasure now, but it ain't going to last long. The word inside of Moses kept him. The word is what kept Job. And the devil attacked him. Lost everything. Lost his family. Lost his health. The devil attacked his body with monkeypox. That's what this thing is that attacked Job. Monkeypox. Scraping himself. Blisters everywhere. Sores everywhere. Pussy, running, sores, maggots, getting in the sores. And he's trying to strip the maggots out. <laughs> His wife said, Joe, Joe, 
Would you just go ahead on and cuss God and die? Look, you see, ain't God ain't with you no more. You've gone from being the richest man to the poorest man. Look at you. Job said, woman, what's wrong with you? Lost his boys, lost his daughters, lost his wealth, lost his friends, lost about everything that he had. But Job said, though he slay me, yet I'm going to trust it. Just because all of these things come up on Job, Job said, I'm not going to backslide. I'm not going to stop serving God because all of this happened to me. You know, I ain't stopped serving God because of my son. I had to bury him and then have to bury my wife. Have to bury Sister Beverly. I ain't stopped serving God because of all these misfortunes and all these afflictions that fell upon me. Upon this rock, Jesus is my rock. Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. The devil can throw everything in the book at you. But if you build on the word, if you build upon the word of God, the devil can't stop you. He can't stop what God has a day for you to do. Some people that backslide, they get bitter, they blame God for all these things. But Job said that though he slay me, I'm going to trust him. I shall come forth as pure gold. That's what people didn't understand about my wife and I. She built up on the testimony of Jesus. That's, that's right. I'm built upon the word, the testimony of Jesus. Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against you. Make sure you're building on the right thing. Make sure your faith is not building upon a man, upon a woman. Make sure your faith is not building upon the government, upon stimulus checks. Make sure your faith is not built upon some doctor. Make sure your faith is built upon the word. Make sure that you're establishing your faith upon the word. Everything else can be shaken. Everything else can be blown away from you. But make sure that when it's blown away, your faith is still on the word. And thank God. Why, why about the word? Because his word cannot fail. His word cannot change. His word, heaven and earth, will pass away. But my word shall not pass away. The devil will throw everything at you. But if you build on the word, the word is going to sustain you. The word is going to strengthen you. The word is going to keep you. The word is going to bring you through every storm, every trial, every problem, every situation. The word of God, how in heaven and earth will pass away. But my word, my word, my word shall not pass away. Thank you, Jesus. You better make sure you're building on the right thing. 
Because you're going to be tested. Amen. The devil is going to throw everything in the book at you. To try to break you. If you're building. Come on man. If you're building. Come on excitement. If you're building upon emotions. If you're building upon traditions. If you're building upon materialism. All this stuff is going to be taken from you. Yeah. Read it. Right. Read it. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness, into the wilderness to, be the to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted, when he fasted, forty days, forty, days, 40, nights, 40, nights, 40 nights, he was afterward, afterwards hunger. hunger. And when the tempter came, when the tempter came, he said, he said, now be the Son of God. If you are the Son of God, commanded these stones, commanded these stones. He made bread. But he answered. But he answered. And said. And said. It is written. It's written. It's written. It's written. It's written. It's written. Man. Man shall not live by bread alone. Come on. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word. By every word. That comes where? From the mouth of God. And the devil took him up on a high pinnacle. Said, if you're the son of God, commit suicide. Cast yourself down. And Jesus said, it's written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Didn't he? The devil took him in a place. Said, I give you all the kingdoms of the world. If you bow down and compromise and quit preaching holiness. Quit preaching so hard. If you just give in a little bit. Jesus said, get behind me, devil. It's written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. Saints of God, stand on the word. Jesus took the word and told the devil, get behind me. Get the out of here. Out of here. Huh? Well, I ain't come out of some college so I can say it. Get the hell out of here, devil. Get the hell out of here. You ain't going, you ain't taking me to hell. You're not taking my family to hell. You're not taking my loved ones to Get out of here. Get the, get the, get the. Don't you let the devil take you to hell. He comes to steal and to kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. If Jesus took the word and put the devil behind him with the word, what about you and I? Tell him to have five more minutes. Turn with me. Turn with me. Over here now. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. And the. Uh, I don't know. I believe this. But let's start at verse 1. Brother Chuck. You got your microphone? You Matthew chapter 8. Start at verse 1. Give me just about 10 more minutes. 8 and verse 1. Go ahead. When he was come down from the mountain. When he was come down, talking about Jesus. When he would come from the mountain. Great multitudes followed him. Great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leopard. And behold, there come a leopard. Worship him, saying. Worshiping him, saying. Lord, if I will. Lord, if you will. Clean. You can make me clean. And Jesus Christ. Lord, if you will, you can make me we're clean through his word. He can clean your mind up. He can clean your heart up. He can clean your spirit up. He can clean your, your he can clean you up in, in, in all of these things that you dabble into, getting involved into. He can clean our ears up while we hear the right thing. He can clean our feet so we walk on the right path. He can clean our hand so we don't have it the wrong way. We need a cleanser. He said his word. His word can cleanse us. His word can, can deliver you. His word can cleanse you and deliver you. Go ahead. And 
Jesus put forth his hand. Jesus put forth his hand. And touched him. Said, touched him. Said, I will. I will. Be thou clean. Be thou clean. Oh, Lord. Be thou clean. Uh huh. And immediately. Immediately. His leprosy was cleansed. Read on. Jesus said unto him. Jesus said unto him. See thou tell no man. Don't you tell nobody. But go thy way. Go your way. Show yourself to the priest. Show yourself to the priest. And offer the gift that Moses gave. Offer the gift Moses gave. For a testimony. For a testimony. Uh huh. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, and when Jesus came into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion. That came to him a centurion. Beseeching him and saying, Beseeching him and saying, Lord, Lord, my servant lying at home sick. I got a servant at home sick, dying, grievously tormented. Grievously tormented. And Jesus said to him, Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. I'm going to come and heal him. Yeah. See, Jesus was the Word made flesh. The word that made everything is now walking in flesh. The word that made everything now can, if it makes you, it can, if you break, it can fix you. If it made you, then it can deliver you. If it made you, I don't care what come against your body, what come against your family, your home, your finances. If the word of God is in you, that word can replace it. That word can turn it around. The word of God can fix it. He sent his word to heal. He sent his word to deliver. The gospel is the word that God has sent to this generation through you. Finish with me. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. But speak the word. But look at that. Look at that. Speak the word. Speak the word only. Speak the word only. Yeah. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Just speak the word. That's what I'm doing tonight. Just giving you the word. And if you open your heart and receive it and believe it, the word I heal you. I deliver you. I drive that evil force away. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 That's what gave my wife. 17 more years when she was diagnosed to leave. God gave her 17 more years. Hallelujah. Go ahead. But speak the word only. Speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. My servant will be healed. For I'm a man under authority. I'm a man under authority. Having soldiers under me. I got soldiers under me. I say to this man, I say to Brother James, uh huh, go, 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 get out of here, go, go, go. go. and he go, go ahead, and to another, and I tell Brother Al, come, come here, Brother Al, you're taking your time, and he comes, come here, we're gonna go back and start over again. Uh -huh. Well, I'm a man under authority, and no, so, so. All right, brother, come. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what Jesus said. I can tell sickness to go. I can tell healing to come. I can tell these powers that oppresses you. I can tell them to go. I can tell miracles to come. I can tell deliverance to come. Yes. Hallelujah. Why? Because he said that my word is spirit. And my word is life. My word is faster than a speedy bullet. My word is able to leap tall building out of single back. My word is uh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word that I'm preaching has got life in it. The word that I'm preaching has got deliverance. The word that I'm preaching will protect you. It'll deliver you. It'll sustain you. It'll keep you.
Jesus. Live around with that naked woman. This is why Daniel didn't bow down and the, the power himself. He had the word in him. Religions can't keep you. Religions can't save you. Religions can't transform you. Religions can't get into your spirit and separate you from all this stuff. But the word of King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. All things was made by Him. Without Him was nothing made that was made. In Him was life. The life is the light of man. The light shines in darkness. The darkness comprehended in us. That's the true light. That light for every man that comes into the world. He came into the world, and the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many had received him, to so them gave him power to become sons of God. The world, we have seen it. We have touched it. We have put it in our bosom and walked among us. This same word is alive today. It's quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two ended swords. Come on, Lord, and they can't show you. Yeah, 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 and out of your mouth is going to flow the sword, sharp, two-edged sword, which is the testimony of Jesus. It shall cut in pieces this evil kingdom that's trying to bring corruption, that's trying to bring pollution. My word shall bring forth a great deliverance to this generation. Thank you, Jesus. All for yourselves to be one of those that I will be a living epistle walking in. I will cause my words to be quickened, to be made alive in you. And my word in you will put down darkness. My word in you will draw back evil. My word in you will slay the drug, the evil spirits, and the alcoholic spirit, and the unclean spirit, and the perverted spirit, and the sick and infirm spirit. I'm sending my word. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands, the Lord. Let this word come at me. Transform me. Make me a new creature. Let me be impregnated with that word that would keep, that would transform, that would renew, that would change us into your image, that we might come forth as sons of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Stand on your feet a moment. I have to pick this up. But I'm telling you, God's going to raise other people. I'm trying to bring a 220 through a 110. Why? This 110 about to burn out. That's why. Man, you see why I have to have that steak. You know, man, I have a good steak today. I told him I want the best steak in the house. Excuse me. I want the best steak in the house. Eight ounce. That's right. But I had to have it. Because I had to be able to come out here. And I can't preach this word with baloney. <laughs> right. Huh? That's what. That's what they told them. You know, uh, a coach. Back in a school. A coach said. Man, 
that were all schools were, se were separate, segregated. Man, uh, our team come out that burning high, Jesus. and this team from Concha, Concha Cannon, they had black outfits on, and they was white, and, and we was all black. And man, they come out there, and they beat a 40 to nothing. And the coach said, what's wrong? The coach, them boys been eating steak. We just been eating uh, bologna sandwiches. So what we got ain't no match to what their mama been giving them. So they, they can afford steak, but we can't afford that. What God wants you to have steak to stand up against these powers. He wants you to eat his flesh and to drink his blood, which is his word. This word is steak. This word will sustain you. This word will draw the devil out of your home, out of your family, out of your life. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Try, to, try to preach the gospel. Just eat crackers, soda crackers. They won't do it. Just eat by and sausage. Ain't gonna do it. Just eat baloney. Ain't gonna do it. That's why when I go to get a restaurant, go to a restaurant, get a steak. What can I do I get? For lady and yard. <laughs> Not that I'm high minded, but I know I got to have something that's got some energy. I know I got to have some because I'm not one of them preachers that you're going to sleep on. I got to have something that's going to sustain me so I can put this word out with force. So I can put this word out. I know I'm a little bit of something. Somebody said, someone told me this week, say, I love, I like to hear you preach. Say, you're so soft in your voice, you can't understand it. So how do you preach? I said, why don't you preach the word? I just want to know, come and hear it. <laughs> so you can't be too much of a preacher because you're so soft. Well, you can't hardly understand what you're singing. <laughs> I used to be on radio, and they thought I was, when I was on radio, you know, they thought they was going to come out there and see, you know, somebody like this. And when they come to the church on 36th Street North and saw some pretty little bit of something, oh, Lord. they said, this can't be the same man <laughs> that we hear on radio with his big mouth out there blasting against the devil and sin. This can't be the same man. Now, it's the anointing. It's the word. The word. It's the anointing. The word is what slay the job. It's not the person it's the anointing. It's the word that's going to slay sin, sickness, and demon spirits. That's all. That's the testimony of Jesus. The word of God. Preach on the Dutch lady. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The word preachers. Preachers. Don't just preach about it. Now you was making some hot cakes and they burn up and you just thank God they didn't burn the house down. That ain't no testimony. <laughs> testimony is the way. Learn how to get the word. Learn how to pray the word. Learn how to witness the word. Testify the word. You can't do it until you get it in you. Come on. You know, I just thank the Lord. God bless me with a brand new car. And I, I just got to pay. All I have to do is just pay $500 a month. That's <laughs> that's I mean, oh, that's okay. But the blessings of God make it rich and add no payments. God, so free to ever see free. God wants to bless us with these natural things. But he don't want these natural things to be our testimony. He want our testimony to be that because we sought first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, these things was added to us. Amen. 
Put your faith in the word. Amen. Come on, let's talk to him a few minutes. That steak is about land is course. But that steak, that steak, uh, it stopped about, about an hour ago. <laughs> I've been going off the pure anointing now. Come on, let's talk to God and be with us tomorrow. Come on, brother, church. Lead us in a good plan. Let's talk to God here a few minutes, everybody. Don't just run out. Talk to God here a few minutes. I'm not giving you this word for you to just let it go by the wayside. Come on, let's talk to God here a few minutes. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, stand to your feet. Oh, hallelujah. Lift your hands to heaven. Say, Lord, I thank you for this word. The word of life. Lord, you said that you were going to confirm your word. Right now, lift your hands. The Spirit spoke and said he would confirm the word. Lift your hands. Reach out to him right now. Maybe he'll confirm it to you tonight. If you have a need, if you've got a need of healing in your body, let him right now reach out and say, Lord, I believe, I received this word tonight. I believe that your word is able to go into my heart, go into my body, go into my mind, go into my bones, go into my blood, go into my spirit. Whatever that place is where you need God to reverse what the devil is doing, tell him right now, Lord, come into my heart. If my Lord, I've been having problems with my heart. You've been having problems with your memory. Say, Lord, help me with my memory. You've been having problems in your church. Say, Lord, I believe this word tonight. Your word is sent to heal me. Your word is sent to deliver me. Your word is able, Lord. And I believe you tonight. God, let your word come into my heart. Let it come into my body. Let it come into my home. Lord, I got children in need. The God broke off of it. I got love brothers and sisters that need God in their lives. Lord, I know people that need help tonight. Let your word bring deliverance. Let your word bring healing. Let your word bring forth the testimony of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and tell it. Stand in the gap. God, I receive your word, Lord. Your word is life to them to find it. Your word is life to them to hear it. Your word is life to them to receive it. Your word is health to all of their flesh. Your word is healing tonight. Your word is happiness tonight. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, let your word live in me. Lord, cause me to be born by the seed of your word. Put your, your word in my heart. That I might sin, that I might get sick, that I might compromise, that I might get weak, Lord, that I might be defeated, but that I overcome the world. God, get this, put this word in my heart, where I can overcome everything that comes my way. Let me be built upon the word, where I can stand in my trials, stand, Lord, through the troubles that life brings. In the name of Jesus, Lord, break up my fallow grounds. Lift your hand, put your hand over your heart, say, Lord, break up my fallow grounds. Help me to rebuild my altar, rebuild a prayer life. Lord, this is the only way we're going to get to meet in the Word, is follow it up with prayer. God, help me to get in my prayer place. Help me to enter into a dedication of prayer. God, and give your Word, help me to read the Word. And get the scriptures in me. So when the devil comes, Lord, I can say it's written. I can speak your word only. And I can receive what I need from you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. God, touch every family here represented tonight. God, meet the needs of every soul. Every man, woman, boy, girl, child, baby, whatever tonight. Confirm your word in these lives. Confirm your word, Lord, by answering and meeting their needs in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. We praise you. Give him a good praise tonight. Hallelujah.